Top 20 Space Paranoia Movies Explored Exploring the depths of space has always been a source of fascination and intrigue for humankind. From the earliest depictions of space in literature and film to modern-day sci-fi epics, the concept of space travel has captivated audiences for generations. But with the unknown comes fear, and the fear of the unknown in space has been the basis of countless sci-fi movies. Since Paranoia Movies explore the dangers of the final frontier, including the isolation, the unknown, and the inherent risks that come with pushing the boundaries of what we know. From classics like Forbidden Planet and 2001, A Space Odyssey, to modern thrillers like Life and Interstellar, we've covered the best space paranoia movies from the 50s to the current decade. So, my dear space freaks, fasten those seatbelts as we dive into this video that will make you question everything you know about reality and sanity. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I am home. Number 1. Event Horizon, 1997 A starship named Event Horizon left on its first voyage to Proxima Centauri, but it lost all contact with Earth only to be found seven years later in the decaying orbit around Neptune. Immediately enough, scientists sent a rescue vessel called Lewis and Clark to investigate the mysterious reappearance of Event Horizon. The rescue mission was joined by Dr. William Wire, the man who designed Event Horizon. It turns out that the lost and found spaceship was capable of folding space-time, but as the crew gets on board Event Horizon, the gravity drive activates and sends a shockwave that destroys Lewis and Clark. The crew begins experiencing terrifying hallucinations that reflect their deepest fears and regrets. Furthermore, they uncover a disturbing video log showing the previous crew engaging in disturbing acts of self-harm and mutilation after activating the ship's experimental gravity drive. Wire reveals that the drive opened a portal to a nightmarish dimension beyond the known universe and that the Event Horizon has become sentient under the influence of an evil force. And now, the crew will have to find a way to survive this nightmare before they meet the same fate as the crew of Event Horizon. Directed by Paul Anderson, Event Horizon is dark and disturbing and delves into themes of madness, sacrifice, and the unknown. But the underlying theme is that of extreme paranoia and claustrophobia. The concept of a ship that opens a portal to a hellish dimension beyond our own universe is fascinating. Anderson does a good job of building tension and creating an ear atmosphere. With some striking visuals and grotesquely disturbing imagery will haunt you long after the movie is over. Oh yeah, if you want just another reason to watch it, then do it for Sam Neill's performance. Number 2. Pandorum 2009. In the year 2174, the fate of humanity rests on the success of the Elysium spacecraft's mission to the planet Tannis, which 60,000 humans seek to colonize, as Earth has been doomed. But when Corporal Bauer of Flight Team 5 wakes up from his extended hypersleep, he's plunged into a space-related disease called Pandorum, a psychological disorder that's slowly driving him insane. As Bauer struggles to make sense of his situation, he discovers that his ship's reactor is malfunctioning. With the help of Lieutenant Peyton, who also wakes from hypersleep, they attempt to access the bridge to regain control of the ship. But they soon realize that the bridge's access door is locked, and they're trapped in a room with no escape. And to make things worse, they find mutated cannibalistic humanoids lurking in the ship's shadows. With the help of biologist Nadia and a huge farmer named Men, they must fight for their survival against an unknown threat. Meanwhile, Peyton rescues Corporal Gallo, only to discover that he succumbed to the debilitating effects of Pandorum. As tensions rise and their situation grows more perilous, the crew must come together to overcome their fears and work together to save themselves and humanity. But will they survive? Co-produced by Paul Anderson and directed by Christian Albert, Pandorum features impressive visual effects and a haunting score that adds to the film's eerie atmosphere. The action sequences are intense and well executed, keeping the audience on the edge of their seats. However, the film does rely heavily on jump scares and and some of the scares feel cheap and predictable. Having said that, Pandora manages to create this feeling of seclusion that seeps into your bones. And honestly, Pandorum is a movie that deserves attention, making Albert's English language debut one that you definitely don't want to miss.
Number 3. Alien Movie Franchise The Alien franchise is nothing less than a thrilling space journey through deadly encounters between humanity and the Xenomorphs, nature's apex killing machines. Set predominantly in the 21st and 24th centuries, the franchise showcases a futuristic depiction of humanity as a spacefaring species that travels through the cosmos using cryosleep, enduring journeys that last months, if not years. They have managed to make long-distance travel possible by inventing technology that allows allows faster than light travel. Throughout the movies, the unscrupulous megacorporation, Wayland yutani Corps, manipulates and endangers characters for their own profit-driven motives, adding an extra layer of tension to the already gripping narrative. Ridley Scott's later alien films also fictionalize the origin of humanity, with an ancient humanoid species called the Engineers. The franchise chronicles these incidents across multiple generations, making for an epic and unforgettable cinematic experience. The alien movies masterfully execute suspense, terror, and gore, while blending a fine concoction of science fiction and horror, which in itself is a winning combination. And it was the original movie that paved the way for several other ventures. The franchise is characterized by its dark, claustrophobic settings and the relentless, unstoppable nature of the aliens. These elements create intense dread and tension, and the protagonists are often trapped in tight, confined spaceships or space stations, with no escape from the xenomorphs, which goes on to create an incredible incredibly unsettling experience. Furthermore, since Wayland yutani is the overarching secondary villain, the characters are plagued by paranoia, not knowing who they can trust. I am sure everyone watching this video has watched at least one of the Alien movies, but if you haven't, kindly ditch the rock you're living under and watch it. You'll thank me later. Number 4. The Martian 2015 The Martian is a thrilling sci-fi movie that follows the crew of the Ares 3 mission to Mars as they explore the treacherous Acidalia Planitia on their 31-day expedition. Unfortunately, a severe dust storm hits, forcing the crew to abandon the mission and evacuate. During the evacuation, astronaut Mark Watney is presumed dead after being struck by debris and left behind on the Red Planet. However, Watney survives the accident and awakens to find himself alone and injured. With limited resources, he sets out to create a sustainable living environment by growing crops inside the crew's habitat and manufacturing water from leftover rocket fuel. As Watney begins to thrive in his new surroundings, he realizes that his only chance of survival is to make it to the next Mars mission, the Ares 4, which will land 3,200 kilometers away from his current location. Determined to make it to the Ares 4, Watney begins to modify the rover for his journey, but he must also face numerous obstacles, including including unpredictable weather and equipment failures. As he battles against the odds, the world watches with bated breath as NASA and the rest of the Ares 3 crew attempt to bring Watney home. Based on the 2011 novel of the same name by Andy Weir, The Martian is one of the best standalone space films ever. Matt Damon delivered a standout performance as Mark Watney, a stranded astronaut on Mars whose determination to survive against all odds is both inspiring and heart-wrenching. Director Ridley Scott's attention to detail is evident throughout the film, creating a vivid and believable portrayal of life on Mars. No wonder he did an outstanding job with the first Alien film as well. The stunning visuals, combined with the gripping storyline and witty humor, make The Martian captivating and entertaining. Interestingly, Wire reached out to NASA when Ridley Scott started preparing a film adaption of his book. NASA saw the potential for the film to promote space exploration and agreed to collaborate with the filmmakers. As a result, NASA provided assistance in ensuring the accuracy of the science and technology to depicted in the film. Number 5. Life 2017 An unnamed probe returns to Earth from Mars with soil samples that may hold the key to discovering extraterrestrial life. However, things take a sinister turn when exobiologist Hugh Derry awakens a dormant cell, which evolves into a dangerous organism that is later named Calvin. The creature's cells are incredibly unique, able to perform multiple functions simultaneously. What I mean is Calvin has the remarkable ability to alter the function of its cells, serving as photosensory cells, 
muscle, and neurons simultaneously. But Calvin soon turns violent and attacks the crew. They realize that the creature is more than they bargained for. With communication with Earth cut off and Calvin growing larger and more powerful by the minute, the team must find a way to stop the creature before it devours them all. But the situation becomes increasingly dire, and sacrifices must be made to ensure the survival of the crew and prevent Calvin from reaching Earth. Will they be able to stop Calvin in time? Or will Calvin fulfill its instinct to wreak havoc on humanity? Directed by Daniel Espinosa, life is a thrilling space adventure that manages to stand out despite its familiar genre. While it may not have a lot of deep themes to explore, it more than makes up for it with its exciting action and suspenseful set pieces. The cast delivers strong performances, and the film's tension is expertly crafted. The movie is a reminder that sometimes, simplicity can be the key to a successful film. Having said that, the film is not particularly original, but it still is a solid addition to the genre and a must-see for fans of sci-fi and horror alike. But personally speaking, it's a jolly ride that will leave you on the edge of your seat until the very end. Number 6. Gravity, 2013 The film begins with veteran astronaut Matt Kowalski commanding a space shuttle called Explorer on a mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. Along with him, Dr. Ryan Stone is aboard her maiden space mission, tasked with upgrading the Hubble's hardware. As the duo is performing a spacewalk, they receive a chilling message from Houston's mission control about a rapidly expanding cloud of space debris. The debris, caused by the Russians shooting down a presumed defunct spy satellite, is headed their way and they are ordered to abort the mission and return to Earth immediately. But things go horribly wrong as the debris strikes the Explorer and Hubble, leaving Stone tumbling through space. Kowalski, ever the hero, dons his manned maneuvering unit and bravely rescues Stone. Together, they return to the Explorer, only to find that the rest of the crew has perished and the shuttle is severely damaged. With time running out and communication with mission control lost, Stone and Kowalski have to act fast. They decide to use the MMU to reach the International National Space Station, which is their only hope for survival. But the journey is perilous, and they have only 90 minutes to make it to the ISS before the debris field completes an orbit and threatens them again. As they make their way toward the ISS, they face one obstacle after another. But Kowalski, the seasoned astronaut, keeps his cool and guides Stone through the treacherous journey. With every passing minute, the tension builds and the stakes get higher. Will they make it to the ISS in time and survive the deadly debris field? Gravity is an absolute tour de force of cinema, providing audiences with a visceral and heart-pounding experience that is second to none. It's a technical masterpiece, seamlessly blending stunning visuals and breathtaking action to create an immersive and awe-inspiring tale of survival against all odds. Director Alfonso Cuaron has crafted a film that is both harrowing and comforting intimate and glorious. It's the kind of movie that will leave you feeling more connected to the world around you and marveling at the sheer imagination and creativity that went into its creation. Whether you're a die-hard movie buff or just looking for an unforgettable cinematic experience, Gravity is a film that is not to be missed. Number 7. Apollo 18, 2011 The film is set in 1974, two years after the Apollo 17 mission. The cancelled Apollo 18 mission is given a second chance as a top-secret Department of Defense mission. Commander Nathan Walker and his juniors, Lieutenant Colonel John Gray and Captain Ben Anderson, are launched toward the moon to deliver a classified payload, which is basically an early warning detector for ICBM attacks from the USSR. As they land on the desolate south pole of the moon, they discover something strange about the lunar rocks, and unbeknownst to them, the camera captures a rock moving in a nearby crater. It's clear that something is not quite right. Despite being assured that the noises they hear and the strange movements are just interference from the ICBM detector, the team can't shake the feeling that they are not alone. Anderson discovers footprints that lead to a Soviet lander, abandoned but still functional. Inside a nearby crater, he discovers the body of a dead cosmonaut and a broken space helmet. As if things couldn't get any worse, the team's flag goes missing, the lander is violently shaken, and Walker discovers non-human tracks outside of the lander and claims to have evidence for extraterrestrial life. With interference from an unknown source making it impossible to contact Houston or Gray, the team must fight for survival against an unknown enemy. Will they make it back to Earth alive? Apollo 18, directed by Gonzalo Lopez Gallego, is a refreshing take on the horror genre. While some may find the film silly and derivative, it's a welcome break from the usual formulaic scare tactics that 
that dominate the genre. Yes, it is a low-key and unassuming film, but it manages to rise above its modest expectations, making it a must-see for horror fans looking for something different. The film's skillfully sustained suspense keeps viewers on the edge of their seats and delivers a gripping and memorable experience. Rather than relying on cheap scares and over-the-top shocks, Apollo 18 builds its tension gradually, resulting in a satisfying and satisfyingly creepy atmosphere. Number 8. Interstellar 2014 The world in Interstellar was on the brink of collapse due to a global famine, which caused humanity to abandon scientific pursuits. Former NASA pilot Joseph Cooper, played by Matthew McConaughey, is forced to work as a farmer when he discovers a mysterious pattern of GPS coordinates in his daughter's bedroom. He is drawn into a top-secret NASA mission to discover a habitable planet in another galaxy. Cooper joins forces with a team of scientists, including Anne Hathaway's Amelia, to travel through a wormhole to explore three potentially habitable planets orbiting a supermassive black hole. But the mission is not without its dangers, and the crew faces numerous obstacles, including massive tidal waves and time dilation caused by the proximity of the planets to the black hole. As the team journeys deeper into space, Cooper's daughter Murph becomes a scientist working with her father's former mentor, Professor Brand. When Cooper and Amelia return to the Endurance after a brief mission on the first planet, they discover that 23 years have passed on Earth, and Murph is now an adult. Adult. She reveals that Brand had given up on solving the gravity equation and instead put their mission's hopes on Cooper's team establishing a space colony using pre-fertilized eggs on a new habitable planet. Interstellar is one hell of a ride. Christopher Nolan takes us on a wild journey through wormholes and beyond, giving us a sci-fi geek's ultimate fever dream. But it's not just all about cool space stuff. This movie asks some seriously deep questions about what it means to be human. The visuals are absolutely stunning, and there's a surreal, dreamlike quality to everything that makes it all the more captivating. Having said that, this is a deadly serious movie that tackles some weighty themes. It's ambitious as hell, and Nolan pulls it off with a plum. Honestly, this might be Nolan's best movie yet. Bold, beautiful, and utterly unforgettable. Go to hell! Where you belong! <laughs> Number 9 Night Flyers, 1987. The film is set in the future and follows a group of scientists and telepaths who embark on a journey to make contact with an alien race. They travel abroad the Night Flyer, a state-of-the-art spaceship that is operated by an eccentric and reclusive captain. As they journey deeper into space, the crew begins to experience a series of terrifying events, including the malfunctioning of the ship's systems and the appearance of a malevolent force that seems to be stalking them. The telepaths also start to experience horrifying visions that suggests something evil is lurking on board. Their journey takes a dark turn, and it becomes a tense battle for survival on board the Night Flyer. As the crew confronts the horrors of space and the unknown, they must also confront their own fears and inner demons. Based on George R. R. Martin's novella of the same name, Night Flyers is a trippy film that takes you on a wild and bizarre ride through space. The ship's interior design is unique, if not insane, and the gore is turned up to 11 when things get crazy. Michael DeBars does an impressive job as the psychic who goes off the deep end, and the overall sci-fi concept is solid. The cast is decent, but no one is going to win an Oscar for their performance, and they probably knew it while they were filming. Catherine Mary Stewart's voiceover has a bit of a private eye vibe, which is entertaining, and Michael Prade's hologram character, who thinks he's David Bowie's Major Tom, is a quirky addition to the crew. What I really love about this movie is its willingness to explore outlandish ideas, even if it struggles to communicate them at times. Despite its flaws, Night Flyers is a fun and surreal space adventure that sci-fi and horror fans will enjoy. <laughs> Number 10. The Last Days on Mars, 2013 the Last Days on Mars has a group of eight scientists stationed at a Martian research base that is just hours away from returning to Earth when they stumble upon a groundbreaking discovery. It turns out that life did exist on the Red Planet, but things take a terrifying turn when one of those crew members, Marco Petrovic, falls into a sinkhole while collecting samples and disappears. Captain Charles Brunel and his team embark on a dangerous mission to retrieve Petrovic's body, but they soon discover that something sinister is lurking in the depths of the Martian soil. As they 
try to uncover the truth behind the strange fungal organism they've found, they begin to realize that their once trusted crewmates have been infected and transformed into bloodthirsty zombies. But these zombies are not dumb and senseless, they are tactical and intelligent. With time running out and their numbers dwindling, the survivors must fight to stay alive and find a way to stop the infection from spreading to Earth. But as they struggle to hold off the relentless zombie horde, they begin to realize that the true threat may not be the creatures themselves, but rather the darkness that lies within each of them. The Last Days on Mars is a good old zombie flick with an intergalactic twist. The plot with the team of researchers on Mars stumbling upon a biological agent that turns them into fast, aggressive, zombie-like creatures is something fascinating, to be honest. And let me tell you, the undead of the Red Planet are something to behold. While some of the action scenes are a bit choppy, the overall sense of hopelessness is palpable as the cast is slowly whittled down. The standout performance comes from Liev Schreiber, who brings some unexpected choices to his role. It's not quite as emotionally impactful as Daniel Boyle's Sunshine, but it still delivers some solid thrills. Overall, The Last Days on Mars is a pulpy, sci-fi horror flick that's definitely worth a watch. Number 11, Silent Running, 1972. The film set is on Earth where all plant life has been wiped out, and we follow Freeman Lowell, played brilliantly by Bruce Dern, a botanist and ecologist aboard the Valley Forge, one of the eight American Airlines space freighters stationed outside Saturn. Lowell's mission is to maintain the last remaining geodesic domes, which house the world's last remaining plant and animal life. But when the order comes to destroy the domes and return the freighters to commercial service, Lowell re rebels against the destruction of the very life he spent years protecting, as the other crew members follow orders to destroy the domes. Lowell fights back to save the remaining specimens. This movie has got it all. Killer trees, poker playing robots, and a man who loves his salad. Bruce Dern's performance is on point, and the film's serious and intelligent character work makes it stand out from other sci-fi movies. Even though the idea of a lone caretaker of Earth's last vegetation is not new, Silent Running manages to bring something fresh to the table with its intimate and thoughtful approach. It's a gem that is often overlooked in the genre and clearly deserves more love than it gets. <laughs> Number 12, Altered States, 1980. Edward Jessup, a psychopathologist studying schizophrenia, begins experimenting with sensory deprivation using a flotation tank, aided by two like-minded researchers. After hearing about a tribe in Mexico that uses a sacred potion containing Amanita muscaria and Hymia salicifolia to induce hallucinations, he travels there to participate in their ceremony. He experiences intense hallucinations and returns to the U.S. with a sample of the potion for analysis and further self-experimentation. When talk Toxic concentrations of the substance make increased dosage dangerous. He turns to sensory deprivation, which leads to a series of drastic visions. Monitored by his colleagues, he insists that the visions have externalized, and after emerging from the tank, he insists on being x-rayed before he reconstitutes. A radiologist inspecting the x-rays says they belong to a gorilla. In the later experiments, Edward's physical and biological regression continues. He emerges from the isolation tank as a small, feral caveman and goes on a destructive rampage. Where will his obsession and madness take him? Altered states will take you on a journey through the depths of human consciousness. William Hurt delivers a powerhouse performance as Edward, capturing the character's obsession and descent into madness with incredible intensity. Director Ken Russell creates a surreal and dreamlike atmosphere that perfectly captures the film's themes of altered consciousness and primal instincts. The themes of spirituality and sexuality are intricately intertwined, creating a complex and deeply symbolic narrative that keeps the audience engaged throughout. While some may find the film's ideas challenging or controversial, there's no denying that altered States is a unique and memorable cinematic experience. A whole storm of them, Captain. The black hole. Number 13, The Black Hole, 1979. The USS Palomino is almost done with its deep space mission, and they stumble upon the USS Cygnus, a ship that went missing 20 years ago. Dr. Kate's father was on that ship, and they decide to check it out. They find that the Cygnus is defying the laws of gravity, and they crash into it, causing some damage. When they investigate the Cygnus, they discover that there's a creepy but extremely intelligent scientist named Dr. Hans Reinhardt and his army of robots on board. 
He claims he's been alone for years, but something doesn't quite add up. Kate begins to have strange visions, and it becomes clear that Reinhardt has been conducting dangerous and unethical experiments. The crew becomes suspicious of Reinhardt, and things start to get tense. The Black Hole may not be the most original sci-fi adventure out there, but boy, it is a fun ride. Director Gary Nelson really knows how to keep things moving, and the movie looks more than watchable. Sure, it may borrow a bit from Star Wars, but who cares? This movie has got its own charm and personality. The cast is great, with some real standout performances from Maximilian Schell and Anthony Perkins. And of course, we can't forget the real star of the show, Vincent, the little robot who steals every scene he's in. Overall, The Black Hole is a total blast from start to finish. It's not the deepest or most thought-provoking sci-fi out there, but it's certainly one of the most entertaining. So if you're looking for a fun, action-packed adventure to escape into for a couple of hours, this is definitely the movie to choose. Number 14, Europa Report, 2013. The movie is narrated by Dr. Samantha Unger, the CEO of Europa Ventures, the private company that funded the mission. The six-member crew of Europa One embarks on a groundbreaking mission to Jupiter's moon Europa to find potential sources of life. After six months of mission time, the ship is hit by a solar storm, which knocks out communication with mission control. But tragedy strikes and two of the members die, leaving the crew demoralized. After 20 months, the ship goes into orbit around Europa, and the lunar lander lands safely on the icy surface but misses its target zone. The crew drills through the ice and releases a probe into the underlying sea. Block, who is sleep-deprived and eliciting concern in the rest of the crew, sees the light outside the ship, but he is unable to record it or otherwise convince the crew of its occurrence. The probe is struck by an unknown lighted object, and contact with it is lost, but the crew must go on. They discover a single-celled organism, and marine biology science officer Katya Petrovna sets out to collect surface samples, but her investigation takes a terrifying turn when she falls through the ice, and her camera captures her final moments in the eerie blue light of the unknown bioluminescence. Europa Report is a great example of what can be achieved with a low-budget sci-fi film when the filmmakers have the talent and vision to create something truly special. Directed by Sebastian Cordero, it is a found-footage sci-fi film that brings a fresh take to a familiar theme. Despite its low-budget and bare-bones rendering, the movie delivers is an intriguing story. The film's authenticity and credible science add to its appeal and make it stand out from other films in the genre. The attention to detail, combined with Cordero's approach to the found footage genre, creates a much shrewder alternative to traditional horror films that rely on the power of suggestion. Number 15, Red Planet 2000. In the year 2056, humanity faces an existential crisis as Earth's environment crumbles due to pollution and overpopulation. Hope lies in the form of terraforming Mars with algae, but when oxygen levels mysteriously drop, a team is sent to investigate. Mars 1 is hit by a gamma ray burst upon arrival, and the team is forced to land in the wrong place. They soon discover that HAB 1, the automated habitat designed to produce food and oxygen, has been destroyed. With limited oxygen, and dwindling resources, the crew faces a race against time to fix Mars 1 before it falls out of orbit. But the challenges don't stop there. Amy, a military robot designed to guide them, is lost, and Chantilla sustains a severe injury. The team must make difficult decisions and face their own demons as they fight for survival in the harsh Martian landscape. Gallagher's inventive spirit sparks hope as he builds a makeshift radio from parts of the Mars rover Pathfinder. But the discovery of a new threat, in the form of highly flammable native Martian insects adds a new layer of danger to their already perilous situation. Directed by Anthony Hoffman, this movie was way out of this world. Literally. I mean, who knew that a story about a bunch of astronauts trying to survive on Mars could be so thrilling and engaging? Or at least that's true if you're a 10-year-old. I was particularly blown away by the performance of Val Kilmer, who played Gallagher, but then the other saving grace had to be Carrie Ann Moss. But the movie does get brownie points for the adversities, from Mal functioning equipment to dangerous robots. The characters really had their work cut out for them. Oh yeah, let's not forget the Martian insects. Overall, I'd say this movie has got action, drama, and a whole lot of heart. I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it yet, but let's just say it's a game changer.
Number 16, Sunshine, 2007. In the year 2057, humanity faces a dire crisis. The sun is dying and Earth is freezing. But a glimmer of hope remains in the form of the spaceship Icarus II, piloted by a team of eight international astronauts. Their mission? To jumpstart the sun using a colossal stellar bomb and save humanity from certain doom. As they journey towards the sun, Icarus II picks up a distress signal from a ship long thought lost called Icarus One. Against the objection of some of his crew, the ship's physicist, Kappa, convinces the captain, Kanita, to alter course and attempt to commandeer Icarus One's payload, believing that the two bombs will have a better chance of success than one. But the journey is fraught with danger. Navigator Trey makes a critical mistake that damages the ship's shields, and Kanita sacrifices himself to repair the final panel. Meanwhile, the loss of the ship's oxygen garden and reserves puts the entire crew in jeopardy. Undeterred, Kappa, the acting Captain Harvey, Mace, and Cyril set out to explore Icarus One. What they find is a haunting scene of death and destruction, with the crew burned to death long ago by unfiltered exposure to the sun. Worse yet, they discovered that the ship's mainframe has been sabotaged, rendering the delivery of their payload impossible. As the crew struggles to come to terms with their devastating discovery, they soon find themselves hunting by the deranged and burnt pinbacker, the former captain of Icarus One, who has gone mad from his exposure to the sun. With time running out and their own sanity and lives on the line, the crew must make a final desperate stand to save humanity from certain destruction. Sunshine is a great piece of art that showcases the dynamic collaboration between director Daniel Boyle and writer Alex Garland, who previously teamed up for 28 Days Later. This film is a cerebral thriller that challenges viewers to think deeply about the fate of humanity as a crew of astronauts endeavors to reignite the dying sun before it destroys the Earth, while the film stumbles slightly in its final act, and some of the casting choices are questionable. It remains a noteworthy contribution to the science fiction genre. Boyle's skillful direction keeps the audience engaged throughout, eliciting a range of emotions from terror to joy to melancholy. Basically, it is a complex and thought-provoking film that will leave you pondering long after the credits have rolled. Number 17, 2001, A Space Odyssey, 1968. In the beginning, a tribe of hominins learns to use a bone as a weapon after discovering an alien monolith that appears in their midst. Millions of years later, Dr. Haywood Floyd travels to Clavius Base, a lunar outpost, to investigate a newly discovered monolith buried near the lunar crater Tycho. As he examines the object, it emits a high-powered radio signal upon being struck by sunlight. Eighteen months later, the spacecraft Discovery One, manned by Dr. David Bowman and Dr. Frank Poole, is on a mission to Jupiter. The ship is controlled by HAL 9000, a highly advanced computer with a human personality. When HAL reports a problem with an antenna control device, Dave investigates and finds nothing wrong. Hal suggests letting the device fail to verify the issue, but Dave is suspicious of Hal's behavior. Dave and Frank discuss disconnecting Hal, but Hal overhears their conversation by lip-reading. Hal takes control of Frank's pod and sends him adrift. Dave goes to rescue him but finds him dead when he arrives. He returns to the ship to find Hal has killed the three scientists in suspended animation. As Dave disconnects Hal's circuits, he learns that his true mission was to investigate the radio signal sent from the monitor monolith to Jupiter. The film culminates in a mind-bending and surreal exploration of the monolith and its implications for humanity's future. 2001 A Space Odyssey, directed by Stanley Kubrick, is a masterpiece that continues to inspire awe in viewers as well as filmmakers even after all these years. Unlike most science fiction films that focus on thrilling the audience, 2001 is concerned with exploring the mysteries of space travel and our first encounter with extraterrestrial life. Although the film's narrative may appear sketchy and the abstraction may feel overblown at times. These elements are balanced out by the gripping engagement between man and machine. The grandeur of this film remains unparalleled, and Kubrick's ability to create a philosophical and profound sci-fi film, rather than one that is pulpy and pedantic, makes it a true masterpiece. Number 18, Life Force, 1985. The crew of the space shuttle Churchill discovers a massive alien spaceship hidden within the coma of Halley's Comet. Inside, they stumble upon hundreds of bat-like creatures and three naked humanoids suspended in glass containers. Little do they know, this discovery will send them hurtling towards their own demise. After bringing the mysterious bodies back to Earth, chaos ensues when the female alien awakens and begins sucking life out of everyone in sight. The two male aliens wake up and try to make a run for 
it, but the guards blow them to smithereens. Meanwhile, Colonel Tom Carlson, the lone survival of the ill-fated Churchill, spills the beans on how he shared his life force with the female alien, causing a catastrophic chain of events. But things aren't quite what they seem when Carlson's psychic link to the shape-shifting alien is discovered. With the help of SAS Colonel Colin Kane, Carlson sets out to trap the alien in a psychiatric hospital in Yorkshire, only to realize they've been lured into a deadly trap. The stakes are high as they race to save humanity from the alien's insatiable thirst for life force. Will they succeed, or will Earth be doomed to the same fate as the ill-fated Churchill? Life Force is a prime example of what Hollywood's horror movies can achieve when they're allowed to be adventurous, daring, and entertaining. This 1980s gem didn't take itself too seriously, and guess what? It turned out to be quite effective. Director Toby Hooper delivers a pulse-pounding thrill ride that's not afraid to go all out with extreme violence, nudity, and apocalyptic chaos. But what makes Life Force truly stand out is its treatment of characters, even those who are far from human. Despite being labeled a guilty pleasure by some, Life Force deserves recognition for its sly wit and stunning visuals. From the vampire-like aliens to the hauntingly beautiful sets, every aspect of this film simply helps in keeping you engaged. Number 19, Infinity 2015. In the future, a mining station called OI Infinity is in distress, and a search and rescue team is sent in using teleportation technology. The station's proximity to black holes causes the team to experience severe time dilation. However, the first team sent in returns violently insane. Whit Carmichael, a new member of West Coast SAR, defies orders and teleports to the station using an illegal device after his wife urges him to do whatever it takes to return safely. Later, East Coast SAR is tasked with stopping a payload from the station that has been programmed to destroy Earth. They are also ordered to recover the one surviving member of the West Coast SAR, Wit. Upon arriving, they find that the mining staff has slaughtered each other in a gruesome manner. Wit is able to shut down the payload, but a deranged survivor attacks the team, infecting them with a self-preserving and predatory organic material that dominates any biological tissue it comes into contact with. Wit discovers that the planet is entirely composed of the aggressive and dangerous primordial ooze that can infect and mimic any biological tissue. With this knowledge, he searches for remaining SAR personnel and a way to stop the ooze from infecting Earth. First things first, this primordial ooze sounds a lot like the black goo from the alien universe. To get a better understanding, you can check out our origin videos on Elden, a synthetic who got a black goo overdose and became a monster. Anyway, director Shane Abbas delivers a nail-biting side sci-fi thriller with Infinite, starring Luke Hemsworth. This film excels in its unique and dark atmosphere, providing a genuine thrill for viewers who enjoy a tense and claustrophobic scenario. While character development is not the main focus, it is certainly not lacking. Infinite plot reminds me of other great sci-fi films like Pandorum and Sunshine, and of course Aliens, but it stands out on its own with its unique and suspenseful story. Abbas does an excellent job of keeping the tension high and making the viewer feel like they are part of the action. Number 20, Forbidden Planet, 1956. In Forbidden Planet, the crew of the C-57D landed on a distant planet to investigate the fate of a previous expedition. However, they meet the only remaining member, Dr. Morbius, who warns them of a dangerous planetary force. Despite his warning, the crew dedicates to stay and investigate. As they spend time on the planet, tensions arrive between the crew members and the mysterious Morbius family. The crew learns that the advanced civilization of the Krell, who previously inhabited the planet and left behind powerful and dangerous technology. Dr. Morbius has been studying and experimenting with these technologies, which may have led to the death of the previous expedition. The crew begins to experience strange and terrifying occurrences, and it becomes clear that something malevolent is at work on the planet. They must unravel the secrets of the Krell and confront their own inner demons if they hope to survive. Forbidden Planet is an interstellar ride that you won't want to miss. This film is a perfect example of classic 50s movie making at its finest, with MGM's Big Bucks bringing an alien world to life in vibrant Eastman color on the widescreen cinemascope format. Sure, it's got some of that good old-fashioned male chauvinism that was unfortunately all too common back in the day, but Leslie Nielsen brings that stiff upper lip performance that you just gotta love. And let's not forget the top-notch script and dazzling special effects that still hold up today, not to mention the standout acting. Overall, Forbidden Planet is a sci-fi gem that rises above the cheesy B-movie fare of its time 
time and still stands tall against today's flashy, effects-heavy blockbusters. So that was our list for the best space paranoia movies from the 50s to the current decade. Whether you're a fan of suspense, horror, or just good old-fashioned hi-fi, these top 20 space paranoia movies are sure to keep you on the edge of your seat. Don't forget to leave your questions, suggestions, and anything else in the comments below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.